Hi, this is Carolina Millan, and in today's video, I want to walk you through a very simple model for you to create your very first sales funnel. So stay tuned. All right, so sales funnels. I know that if you're brand new, you have been hearing this term a lot. If you're a brand new digital entrepreneur, you hear people talk about sales funnels, about click funnels, about squeeze pages, opt-in pages, landing pages. So what is all of this stuff? I remember when I got started specifically with funnels, that was six years ago. That was when I built my very first funnel. And just like you, I was really confused. I remember I was in this Facebook group and it was all really confusing. People were talking about sandwich pages, sales pages, webinar pages, landing pages, all of this stuff. And I had no idea what it was. So somebody explained it to me and they said, well, an opt-in page and a landing page are quite similar. All you need to know is that for a funnel to work, you have to collect people's data on one side and turn them into customers on the other side. So basically that's what a funnel is. And just to make it really, really simple for you, uh, just think of a regular funnel that you would use at home, right? Uh, it's not a very perfect or pretty one. It looks like a jar, really, or a vase. Um, but think of clicks, people, emails, views. They all come in through the funnel, just as any liquid would. And then at the other side of the funnel, it comes a little bit thinner, right? So if you have a lot of people, a lot of prospects, you know, people who visit your website, they see your ad, right? You got eyeballs, people see your ad. That's what they call traffic. Or that's what we call, I guess I can include myself, right? That's what we call traffic in the internet marketing space. So that's traffic. Now traffic doesn't equal sales. This is one of the first misconceptions that people have when they first start their online business. They think that they just need a lot of traffic and that is going to take care of everything. Oh, I just need a lot of traffic and I will get sales. There very rarely is a traffic problem. For the most part, if you're not making sales, you have a conversion problem. So if you really want to make sales, you need traffic, but you also need conversions. That's what ultimately turns into sales. So when you get all of this traffic, if your funnel is not structured the right way, right? If it's like super, super thin at the other side or even locked at the other side, there's not going to be any customers or conversions coming in, right? This is where the money happens. This is where you see the transactions. Now, here's one thing that's, that's overlooked by several marketers. People are not reduced to transactions. If you see your customers as mere dollar signs, as transactions, you are not going to be able to build a long-term relationship with them, so you won't be able to build a successful business in the long term, but you will be just getting cash flow real quick, trying to get money out of people. And for me at least, and I know that works for a lot of marketers out there, they don't really care about people, they care about the transactions. But if you're in this for the long run, if you want to add value, if you want to make a difference, then please see people for who they are, human beings. And when they come to your funnel, right, in the form of traffic, and they see what you got going on, if they do turn into money, that's because they perceived value in what you had to offer. So if you're not giving people any value, they're not going to give you their money. If you look at people as just transactions and you trick them into thinking that you're here to offer them value, you're not going to make a lot of money in the long term, okay? And somebody very wise said this, I, I don't remember who said it, but people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So show people that you care, give them value, genuinely care about people, be interested in them. And you can do all of this through your funnel. And I'm gonna get into the graphic part of the funnel in just a bit. Uh, I just wanted to give you the meta metaphorical version of it, right? So in between here, uh, there is a, 
a very classic model, right? In advertising and marketing called the AIDA. Attention, interest, decision, and action. Okay, I am 90% sure that's what each letter stands for, at least um, uh, that's what it means in Spanish. Atención, interés, decisión, acción. So it's the same letters, the same words. ADA, okay, this model still applies today. It's, it's from classic marketing times. This is what I learned at university when I went to university. Uh, in the school of the internet, I have learned so much more, but there are so many classic concepts like this that just never go out of style. So you wanna get people's attention. Then you want to get their interest. Then you want them to make a decision. And then finally, you want them to take action. So when they take action, that's when you see the money. Okay, so let's have a closer look at how this works. I'm going to give you an example. Okay, so let's come up with a very simple. I have, I have some really, really simple sales funnels that I use for my affiliate marketing opportunities, for my ebooks, for my info products. So this is how they start, right? So I'll just give you the example here. So landing page, okay? Landing page slash capture page slash opt-in page. It's all very similar. This is where people land for the first time. That's also why it's called the landing page. Um, an opt-in page is like literally where people opt in. Like they say, hey, tell me more. Send me info. Send me your ebook. Send me the offer. Now with the new privacy and I'm, by the way I'm not going to talk about that in this video because I'm not an expert um, I just want to make a few observations with regards to the GDPR regulations when people opt in on your page they have to know what they're opting in, opting in for so when they give you consent it has to be free consent it has to be very clear unambiguous so if you're going to be sending them marketing they have to know and they have to agree that's the extent of it, okay? So do your due diligence if you will be advertising in Europe. And this is not just about Europe. The whole, this is going to expand into the whole world. So it's better if you do for, uh, things in compliance from now instead of waiting until, well, maybe someday they will implement it here. No, okay? I live in Chile and privacy here is a big problem. We don't have that many regulations unfortunately, but I market for the most, most of my marketing is taking place outside of my country. So I really have to be careful and really be mindful uh, of what I do with people's data. So, so should you, okay, even if you're just starting out. So your opt-in page, um, this is the, the format that I will usually have in an opt-in page. I will usually have a background photo and that background photo will include me, right? Whether it's, yeah, that's supposed to be me. Whether it's me working on my laptop, right? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm an Apple girl if that's, it doesn't even look like an Apple. So I have some pages where it's me working on my laptop somewhere nice, right? Or me with a nice beach or just me living my life. It doesn't necessarily involve fancy cars or extreme luxury. I really just like to show people who I am and the things that I really do. So I happen to travel a lot and I happen to travel to some really cool destinations. So if I can take photos there, I will. And what's important here is that you are as natural as possible, as natural as possible. So just be you. So you usually have a background photo of just me. And then here there's going to be a little box with a little headline and then space for people to enter their name, their email, and then a button to accept. And then obviously, a little checkbox where they agree to get marketing from me. And then of course down here you gotta have your privacy policy and disclaimer or whatever and just explain people why you need their email. In my case, if I'm gonna give you an ebook or a free video series or something along those lines, I need your email so that I can send it to you. So just be clear to people as to why you need their email. You've requested this and for us to deliver it, we need your email. That's it. So people opt in, they put the name, their email, right? And what do I offer here for the most part? And what do I recommend you offer? You can offer an ebook, even though people very rarely read ebooks anymore. I've had some people contact me about my ebooks and thank me for them. So I'm like, all right, there are a few people still reading ebooks. So that's awesome. But a big chunk of people are not. So you should know that. 
You don't want to train people to not read your stuff. So ebook is an option. A video tutorial or something like that is also a good option. People love video. Uh, PDF report, right? A report is more valuable than an ebook because people can just consume it really quickly. A report is not going to be 30, 40 pages long as an ebook could be, but a report could be as, as short as three pages. Or you could also just give them a template for something or a checklist. I personally love checklists. They're simple, to the point, goal-oriented. People know immediately what they're for when they read your headline. They know what it is, they want it. Ebooks tend to be a little more ambiguous or, or less clear or a little more generic sometimes. But if you give people a template also, for example, these are my five best Facebook ad templates. People will love that. Um, this is my checklist. My checklist to making the perfect video presentation. Boom. Do this about something that you know. That's important. By the way, I just got a haircut today and this, this hair keeps coming to my face. <laughs> it's a bit annoying, really. Sorry about that. All right, so template checklist. The next thing is the confirmation page, which can also be named, you know, the thank you page, right? TYP. So the thank you page, and this is, by the way, what I'm showing you here is, is just one of my funnel structures. It's what I use. It's not the best. It's not the only way. It's what works for me. You have to try several things before you find what works for you. Okay? That's my advice, at least. What do I have on a thank you page? I normally have a video. I, I don't usually have a video on the opt-in page just because I don't want to distract people too much from giving me their name and their email. So with the opt-in page, I want to create some curiosity, right? But I also want them to really desire what I'm giving them. And if there's a video, sometimes, not always, sometimes a video will work really well for some opt-in pages. Um, for me, it works better with, with just a, 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 comp a compelling headline, okay? But in the thank you page, I always, always have a video. And I always use the confirmation page, like, congratulations, here's your ebook, here's your checklist, here's your PDF report, here's this, here's that. I normally use the thank you page not only to deliver that or to let them know, hey, check your email to get it, but I use the thank you page to upsell them on something else, to add more value, to say, hey, you took action, the ebook is on the way, I got something else for you. So usually in this video, I will talk about something, right? Um, I will introduce them to something else. It could be an affiliate offer. I've done this uh, a few times where I offer an ebook of mine. And then on the confirmation page, I offer them a training program that I'm an affiliate of. So I start talking about it. And then after a few minutes, the button pops up and they can say, yes, I want to sign up for that. Usually here, if you're offering something for free here, like an ebook, a PDF, something simple, over here, you don't want to sell something much higher than, I don't know, 19 to $197, right? Like that's, that's a good price range for something you offer after a free offer. Just so people don't feel, oh, wow, I just got this thing for free and now they want to charge me $1,000. That is too much of a jump. But a $19 program or a $197 one-time offer, okay? So always use this for a one-time offer. People waste, so many people waste their confirmation pages by not offering something else. If you believe in what you have, there's no reason why you should feel guilty of offering it, offering it to people. Sorry about that. So if you believe in yourself, if you believe you have value, whether it's whether it is your own program that you want to show them here or an affiliate marketing opportunity, if you believe in it, if it works, make a video about it and offer it here. Don't feel bad about it. Too many people feel bad about selling. And I believe the number one reason they feel bad about it is it's not so much that they are shy or they don't know how to sell. It's that they don't believe in what they're selling. So you need to have that belief. And if you don't have it, then switch. 
sell something else, offer something you believe in, and it will come through. You don't need to have any weird sales te techniques. I don't have any. I'm just me on the videos. And with practice and practice and practice, by being you and developing your voice and your message, people will want to buy. So here, I usually have this video, hey, congratulations. I always congratulate people, okay? I don't thank them. Of course, I'm grateful, but I prefer to congratulate them because they didn't do me a favor, they did themselves a favor by getting this thing that I was giving them. So you should think of your product or service the same way. You're not doing anybody, I mean, people are not doing you a favor, you're doing them a favor by putting it in front of them if what you have is valuable. So I congratulate them, blah, 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 and then I have like a three minute video and then I introduce them to whatever it is that I wanna sell. If I'm selling affiliate marketing and there's already a VSL, VSL means video sales letter. If there is a video sales letter of the company that I promote, then I will plug it in here and let them watch it. And then, and then yes, I wanna sign up and I offer bonuses. Usually one, two bonuses, maybe three. Okay, make it appealing and it has to happen here and now. So a timer also helps tremendously. You can set up a, like a 10 hour timer, right? I was reading um, a report from Frank Kern where he says in one of the latest promotions they did with Andy Jenkins and all these really big guys, they had a four hour timer. So they didn't give people that much time to decide. In one of my funnels, usually my webinar funnel, I have an offer at the uh, on the thank you page where I offer them a $7 product. This is really super underpriced, um, but I only give them 59 minutes. So just one hour to make up their minds. I mean, it's a $7 purchase. So it really also depends on how big the purchase is, okay? So that's it, like this is super, super simple, okay? This, thank you page, opt-in page, thank you page with an offer. Then of course, if they click yes, right, you take them to the next page of the funnel, which is going to be, sorry, this got all messy, the order form, okay? The order form should be really straight to the point, very simple, you can add a couple of testimonials. You can also add the testimonials here, or you can put them here in the order form. And then here in the order form, of course, you're going to collect data again. So once again, get in touch with a lawyer or get some assistance as to what data you're collecting and why and be super clear with people and you need to be very careful with people's data. I personally don't store uh, credit card details and that kind of data because I use external processors. So I'm not a processor of credit cards. Um, I don't have like merchant accounts and the, those complicated things. So I'm not too stressed because there are so many tools that I can leverage. Like I've made over a million dollars on the internet without having to process myself that data, but relying on PayPal, relying on, well, there's Stripe. I don't use Stripe yet. Uh, but if you're promoting products as an affiliate, just be clear here uh, about the data processing information and whoever it is that's processing the data. So if you're using ClickBank, for example, right? Have ClickBank's policies there and let people know, okay? Again, I am not an expert in this. I'm just giving you a few of the basics so that you do a bit of, a bit of research. So that's it. Then you have the order form, right? With all the data, then people get the product. And what some people do, what a lot of marketers do is after the order, right? They will have more upsells, right? They will have uh, this is all messy, but let's just do it over here. Let's say you get a $19 product here. They'll have another upsell here, right? Another video and another button, and it could be a $297 thing. And some marketers will have two, three, four of these upsells. That's what an upsell is. People say yes to you once, you have a lot more chances of them saying yes to you again than trying to convert a complete stranger who hasn't said yes to you at all yet. So that is a great opportunity to close more sales, to increase your cash flow, and again, offer value. Offer value. 
if you believe in what you have, there's no shame in selling. Okay? Remember that. So, that's it in a nutshell. I really wanted to share this with you. No matter what level you are in your business, in your marketing, if you can build a super simple two-step funnel, this is probably a three-step funnel, right? Because you have this, then you have this, then people will check their email, they'll get the, the thing that you promised them. Please, please, please deliver on your promise. Like if you, if you promise them here in the opt-in page that, you know, there were a few features about your ebook. Let's say you're promoting an ebook. You'll have a photo here of the ebook, right? Ebook. And there will be some info about what it is about. Please deliver on the promise. If you're going to have some bullet points about what they will learn in that video tutorial or what they're going to learn on that masterclass video, what they're going to learn in that PDF report or template, please deliver. Please deliver. Because if you deliver, and even better, if you over deliver, guess what? People are going to love you. They are going to come back. Some of them might bring you customers. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is, this is how it is. It's good, it's good stuff. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you do have any questions about sales funnels, leave them below the video, leave them in the comments. And if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, please leave me a comment below and subscribe to my channel if this is the first video you ever watch. It means the world to me that you paid attention, that you gave me some of your attention right now. And I am really just creating all of this for you, to add value to you. And if you would really like to learn more about what I do, or if you would like to learn more about my programs, I'm going to put all the information below this video, okay? I have a membership program called the Inner Circle. I might change the name very soon to something else. I haven't decided it yet, but it's a monthly membership and I share all of this and more. I share as much value as I can with my members whenever I go to a seminar, whenever I hire a mentor and I have something to share with them, I do a webinar. So every month we have live webinars, two live training webinars where you get to interact with me and with our trainers. We have our Facebook group and you can really be a part of an awesome community of entrepreneurs. And especially if you're on a lower budget, you cannot hire me to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. This is just the best that I can offer you. And right now, as a special for watching this video, for staying with me here, it'll only be $49 for you to sign up. You can cancel anytime. So all you have to do is just go to go.workwithcarolina.com forward slash CMIC hyphen special, and you can sign up. We'll probably update those things very soon, but for now, that's what it is. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really, really appreciate you. And again, leave me a comment here below if you have questions, and I look forward to see you in the next video.